special how much you really care wait when i'm all alone with you hey guys welcome back to fox my bread tv i'm your host <laughs> y'all i love asmr videos y'all need to get into it like when i can't sleep at night i just type in asmr eyebrows and i watch those and be out in like five minutes right but anywho y'all welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be discussing the interview that kenya barris did with the hollywood reporter now y'all i really enjoyed filming that video that i did about the last article the last article video i did about tyra banks and it was called the racial politics but i didn't want to put that in my title because i don't know i don't want to have youtube digging me before i even get <laughs> before I even get somewhere. But anyway, I had enough, a lot of fun doing that. I want to do it again. So, yeah. So anyway, if y'all don't know who Kenya Barris is, he is the executive creator, executive producer and creator of ABC's Blackish, Freeform's Mixish, no, Freeform's Grownish, I think Mixish come on ABC as well. And as well as Netflix's Pound Black AF. Now, I really love Blackish a lot. I enjoy that show a lot. I did like Pound Black AF on Netflix. It came out during the, you know, the beginning of the pandemic last year. And it was pretty good. I think I need to go back and watch like the third or fourth episode. Cause you know how you start looking at your phone and you did you look up and you done forgot, you know, missed something or anything like that. But it was pretty good. I haven't gotten into Grownish partly because the first episode, you know, I mean, I knew well, I didn't know. Let me back up. I didn't start watching Blackish until the pandemic began. I had watched an episode here and there, but I never watched it faithfully until the pandemic began. And Grownish, I thought it was going to be like, you know, an updated version of a different world, you know, set in the H at an HBCU or something like that. And it's not, or at least would have thought that a lot of um, Zoe's like close knit friends would have been like, black people and it's not nothing wrong with it not being but i don't know i just expected so much more from grownish than i got ever watching so i don't really i don't i only watched a few episodes i'm not even gonna say i watch it and i'm not even gonna tell you not to watch it because you might like it but um yeah i was got a got a little respect for king bears because i believe he also did girlfriends and america's next top model he had something to do with them as well but anywho this article is with the hollywood reporter i will have the link in the description box and it was done by Lacey Rose. Now, usually, y'all, I like to go look at the, the writer to see what the other things they've written about. Lacey Rose, see any other articles she did. But I didn't do that this time. But we're just going to get right to it anyway. So, the it starts right off with the headline, I want to do in your face shit. Kenya Barris on why he left his $100 million Netflix deal to launch BET Studios. Must be nice. <laughs> The showrunner turned mogul reveals a new record label, podcast venture, book deal, and a first look film pack. It's a special time in this industry if you're black and you have something to say. Yeah, so I need to get out there to Hollywood because I got plenty that I want to say. Mm. Or I need to go to Atlanta, whichever one is going to be it. On an otherwise quiet Friday in October, Kenya Barris watched as his name hurtled through the headlines. The stories wasn't, weren't about a new project he was writing or directing, though there were plenty of those. Instead, the creative force behind Blackish, Pound, Black AF, and Girls Trip, which I have not seen, <laughs> was eyeing an exit from Netflix, the first of the the first of the streamers nine figure producers to depart. Oh, and only halfway through his multi-year deal, <sighs> Kenya, his next act, per the flurry of reports, would be a stake in some sort of studio venture with Viacom CBS. The details were spotty, accelerating the gossip mill and leaving many in Hollywood wondering what had gone wrong. I think a lot of people thought I got fired or I quit, like fuck this over some beef with Netflix, says Barry, speaking publicly about the move for the first time. But the truth was more, was more complicated as he revealed over a series of conversations which began with lunch at the members all in San Vicente bungalows in early June. 
Long before a racial reckoning prompted the 46-year-old to reevaluate his priorities, the Netflix marriage had been imperfect. Barris wasn't willing to be the broadly commercial producer that the streamer wanted him to be, and Netflix wasn't being interested in being the edgy home that Barris craved. He isn't even sure the company would have re-upped his $100 million deal had he stayed. But it didn't matter. By January, his reps had untangled him from the pricey partnership as they done with his Disney pack a few years earlier. You know, that's pretty interesting that he's getting off you know kind of scot-free throughout all of this good for you can you hook me up with your lawyer so i can figure out a thing or two about something that i want to do um they hammered out a new deal that gave him equity roughly a third according to barris and a board seat in what would become bt studios good for you all right and then it goes into business, y'all. It's, it's just a lot of business that he's talking about, but we'll get to this part. He says, I want to do in your face shit, he said with his trademark bombast. I want to sell to everybody. And if you don't want to work with me, I'm not saying that you're racist, but other people might. <sighs> that is true. Sometimes it ain't even got shit to do with racism. It's just how people don't want to work with you. But anyway. Season on the moment and his growing cultural capital to say nothing of his bulging Rolodex. Go ahead, Kenya. Barris quietly added a record label with Interscope, along with a book deal with Random House, mm -hmm. a podcast partnership with Audible. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get a sponsorship with Audible. So go ahead, Kenya. And a first look film deal with Paramount. And he intends to have them all working in synergy with him, a self described black dude from Inglewood as his nucleus. So if we sign an artist on the record label and she's amazing, it's can we put her story into a podcast, keep the IP, and then go take that Netflix and sell it as a doc? Uh, don't nobody want to do no 360 deal. Let me just tell you that. No, no, no. Or if we get a random book from or if we get a book from random, random house that we love can we turn it into a tv show or a movie and then do a podcast to supplement it i see what you're trying to do and i'm i ain't gonna say i'm here for it i ain't got nothing to say but um i see what you're trying to do can you that's 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 pretty um ambitious of you I appreciate that Though there are still more questions than answers barris has been busy staffing up his collarbone collar Colabo Inc. Society is now at a rough, roughly 40 employees signing artists and prepping his first collection of essays, which he'll likely title, This is Basic Chick, Things We Know That We're Shocked You Don't. You know what? I bet you I know where that's coming from because there has been this thing since the, you know, the um, protest of last year that I noticed a lot of you know, more conservative white people on my Facebook have been posting things about like the GI Bill and posting posting about housing and redlining. And I went to school with a lot of them and I'm, I'd be so surprised that they didn't know this. I'm like, we, I grew up knowing this about American history. How y'all got by without knowing this? It just really be surprised me that they didn't know that. And so that's pretty initial. I can already say where that's going to be going. Um, even Netflix is co-CEO Ted Sarandos, with whom Barry still has plenty of business, offers praise. Go ahead, Kenya. Kenya has an opportunity to have an impact and legacy that few even dare to dream of. Good for you. Next Tyler Perry or next Kenya Bears. Netflix was supposed to be Barris' savior, and in the summer of 2018, he was all but certain it was. The prolific producer had been at loggerheads with his then-employer, ABC, over a particularly charged episode of his Black flagship blackish title please baby please which wove events like the nfl kneeling protests into a bedtime stories and instead of allowing a neutered version to air during the peabody's winning the peabody winning series peabody winning series fourth season barris agreed to scrap the episode not long after he asked to be let out of his four-year contract which he only which he entered into only a year early with Bear suddenly on the open market, Netflix swooped in. The streamer's offers wasn't as lucrative as the one Warner Brothers, Brothers put forward, but the platform itself was an easier sell. If I was going to step out, I wanted to do it to do something where I could take off all the straps and really hang out of the plane. He told the Hollywood Reporter at the time, using word like loud, bold, unapologetic. Ugh, I get tired of the same old, you know. Same old words to describe everything. To describe what viewers could expect. Not two years later, he released Pound Black AF with each of his eight episodes titled Because of Slavery, which was pretty awesome. Could have been 
title because of white supremacy, but you know, that was pretty awesome. The series wasn't initially envisioned, envisioned as a Kirby enthusiasm style platform for Barris to play a version of himself, but morphed into that, excuse me, at his urging. It launched in April of 2020 and quickly became the most decisive thing Barris has ever made, an outcome that he insists is thrills him, even if the pants from the black community clearly rankle. Among the show's more vocal critics was Charlemagne the God, who wrote Pound Black AF on his popular Breakfast Club radio show, telling listeners it was like white people doing a bad impression of black people. Y'all, it wasn't. I don't know. I didn't really like the criticism that the damn movie, the show received because his, you know, they had, what was her name, Rashida Jones in it and his wife, and they were sick as tired of him making all these light skin or biracial women and all that. He's basing everything off his family. So it didn't hurt me that much to see people. It didn't hurt me at all. And honestly, it felt like I was watching T y'all, if like people love T.I. Tiny's, you know, the family hustle show. Like, that's exactly what I felt like I was watching, like a fictionalized version of T.I. and Tiny Show. So I wasn't upset at it all. Like, you know, black people aren't a monolith, but then I'll get mad and try to put us into a monolith that time. So I'm talking about the black people. But anywho, that's the story for another day. Um, Bears would be lying if he said such comments didn't sting, but claims he's more interested in cultivating leaders, thought leaders like Wes Anderson or Malcolm Gladwell, who's offer kudos. And if y'all haven't, Read some of Wes Anderson and Malcolm Gladwell's speeches. Pretty awesome. Do I want Charlemagne to like my show? Yeah, I do. But I have to be honest with you. I care way less if Charlemagne likes my show than if Malcolm Gladwell does. Good for you. Don't focus on the people who actually love you. What my little brother always telling me, love those who love you. Because my taste is my talent. And Charlemagne has his lane. And it's a very successful lane. It's just not the lane I want. Go ahead, Kenya. Barris has been dragged for purportedly making TV for white people so many times, he actually wrote it into a storyline on Black AF. He contends that he's just trying to make TV that audiences, white and black, want to watch and maybe even helps them understand each other better in the process. And for the record, he does care what white people think of his work. That's Hollywood. That's the people who made the movies I love. Why would I not want them to like what I do? People are like, you're tap dancing. And I'm like, am I tap dancing or, or am I wanting Michael Jordan to think I'm good and I'm LeBron James? That's the word. <laughs> Still, it didn't take long to see that Black AF wasn't exactly a Netflix's wheelhouse either. For Netflix, says Barris, say we got 35 million viewers. They were like, well, it wasn't Fuller House. <laughs> oh, that cold as ice. Right? And he acknowledges that he's often struggled to present the type of projects that Netflix um, that excited Netflix executives, though a forthcoming drama with 50 Cent is said to be a clear exception. Uh, he won't say much, but multiple sources says that it was critically maligned since counsel Jamie Foxx sitcom Dad Stop Embarrass Embarrassing Me, which y'all, I'll be honest, I didn't even watch that um show. I don't know. I, I love Jamie Foxx's Ray, but it was just like over the years. I'm not as huge of a fan of him as I used to be. I like his music, but I don't know. I don't really watch his movies or anything like I used to. But he patently refused. I just don't know that my voice is Netflix's voice, he said. The stuff I want to do is a little bit more edgy, a little bit more highbrow, and a little bit more heady. And I think that Netflix wants to... And I think Netflix wants... Oh, wants down the middle. And then he rephrases, Netflix became CBS. Which I kind of see, because y'all will notice... Like a couple years back, Netflix was giving everybody and their mother an old um, a comedy special, and they would be raunchy and just out there and in your face. But ever since probably August of 2020 or June of 2020, that stuff has been a bit more tame, been entertaining, but a bit more tame. So I will say, I think Netflix is trying to mellow out some. Those inside the streamer says that Barris, at least in or early days was too focused on niche ideas ironically as the same sources point out he seems to have no trouble turning out big fat commercial films like shaft barbershop and the eddie murphy hit coming to america for amazon his eye was often caught wandering into other arenas too in fact he'd all but finalized a podcast deal with spotify only to have netflix executive kill it they said, well, we have a podcast, and I'm like, where, recalls Paris. But I'm sure they do, or they will, and in their defense, they gave me a lot of money to make television, and he intends to continue making plenty of it for the streamer, too, beginning with 
more pile black af which he reveals is foregoing its planned second season in favor of standalone black af family vacation films in a vein of national lampoon vacation flicks that he a co-star rashida drones grew up loving already he and the writers have been batting around ideas for black af brazil and black af mexico by design both are popular netflix territories Okay, sound like Bears kind of got an ego and he be doing too much at once, y'all. <laughs> but when it comes to Bears' real life family, he admits that he's more comfortable with his rising profile than his six children, who range in age four to twenty-one. Blah 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 blah. Um, the regular photo shoots can be hard for them to stomach, particularly the colors, the accusation of colorism, since every comedy Bears has created is based on his own family, which includes his biracial wife and his lighter skinned children. One of his daughters called him recently over in tears over a dust up surrounding the ABC Latinx family comedy that he is developing with Eva Longoria at ABC. And the entertainment head, Craig Urich, referred to it as brownish in an interview. And the back laugh was swift and ugly with one popular tweet proclaiming, <laughs> Blackish, grownish, mixish, brownish. Nah, bro, I think it's time for you to finish. <laughs> That's silly. Bears, <laughs> who's still intimately involved in the ish universe. With Blackish rating in its eighth and final season at ABC, Grownish still thriving at Freeform is hoping the project can survive the media maelstrom. It was never going to be called Brownish, but even if it was, why is it that we turn on ourselves? It immediately becomes, oh, he's doing another family comedy. It's like, yeah, I'm going to do 20 family comedies. No one questioned Norman Lear. True. And if y'all don't know who Norman Lear is, he's the genius behind all those, um, family shows in the 70s. I believe he did Good Times, All in the Family, Maud. We'll see real quick. We'll see why I'm talking. I don't like to be wrong. We will see. We will see. I believe he did Maud, All in the Family. He did a lot of stuff. Yep, All in the Family, Good Times, Step Toe and Son. Did he do... Um, oh, the Jeffersons didn't know that. Okay, yeah, he did a lot of good stuff. But yeah, he wrote about that. We don't, we, I'm, I don't, I read a lot, y'all. And I've never seen an article from the 70s saying that Norman Lear was doing too many family comedies. So he got a point on that. But you know, sometimes we could just be our own worst enemies. As for Barris's daughter, she would have preferred that he clap back in a moment she was like dad they're trashing you there's make they're making these ish jokes you have to say something he recalls and i was like kaylee when they stop making ish jokes is when we're in trouble yeah I, I get him like i don't i don't ever say nothing bad to people who say negative stuff to me <laughs> who say negative stuff to me i told you like i kind of ignore the people you can say because this this is it's one thing for like, you know, constructive criticism, everybody likes to hide behind, but sometimes people just be being out flat out nest for no reason. They don't even make call for all of that. So he goes to talking about the Ahmaud Arbery and the protesting. I don't really want to get into that, y'all. I want this channel to be a little up. Um, no. 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 No, we ain't gonna talk about none of that. No, we ain't talking about none of that, y'all. It is just a lot of it's a little too dark, so I'm just trying to skip down <laughs> into the next. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so now he talks about Mills, and Mills is one of the executives over at BET. Mill's perspective on the latter is simple. One of BET's mission is to missions is to empower Black Americans, and by helping partners like Barris or Tyler Perry, who Forbes recently named to his billionaire list, go ahead, Tyler Perry, we a billionaire. <laughs> um, add to their considerable wealth only benefits the larger Black community the brand serves, which 
And that's true because Tyler, Tyler Perry always says that he super serves his audience. And that's true. So whatever Tyler Perry gets, he gives back. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So he says, so I'm really excited for the next time that Forbes calls and says, hey, there's this extraordinary black creative and extraordinary, sorry, <laughs> black creative. And we just need you to verify some numbers because we're about to put him on the billionaire list, says Mills. It will be my second call and I hope it happens soon. <laughs> that's so sweet. Still, the early days of studio building have not been without hiccups. Plans to line up with other black major producers as equity partners have been a challenge. It's still Viacom, says one top rep, and the general uncertainty in the marketplace only adds complexity. I don't even know what's going, who's going to own Viacom in six months, says Barris. The title, BET Studios, has also been hotly debated. What? With Barris firmly against it. He was overruled by Mills, who's committed to strengthening the brand name. Yeah, let it be BET Studios, Barris. Quit being ignorant, now. Within our business, BET doesn't have the kind of reputation that they want to have. So what I face is people is getting people to understand that under Scott Mills, change is afoot, says Barris's manager, Brian Dobbins, who himself a major player in Black Hollywood. To Mills' credit, he's actively cultivated relationships with top Black talent and their representative, which has translated to projects from Lena Waithe and Lee Daniels, among others <laughs> and now we're getting a big shark like kenya to jump into the water says the water's a little warmer and a little safer than you might have thought it was mm, that's true i mean i knew it was a little safer when tyler perry came on but i see why they saying you know kenya barris been on being that he's worked with disney and netflix and now he's with bt go ahead Kenya. and in typical barris fashion he's wasted no time lining up projects he says he walked out of the irishman a year and a half ago inspired it was somewhat underwhelmed i enjoyed it i didn't love it it was probably less of scorsese but the one thing that became clear to me is that it probably needs to be the end of the italian gangster movie oh uh, no i can watch italian gangster movies uh, forever because i swear to god y'all i'm who michael corleone was based off of in a previous slice somewhere maybe in the 1800s i was a gangster or something <laughs> anywho um oh shoot my bracelet stuck and I'm going to tell y'all something. When I was watching um, Black AF, it was an episode where they was talking about movies and they was like talking about Tyler Perry movies and then they go to see Tyler Perry and he tells, Tyler Perry tells Kenya them that, you know, he doesn't listen to the critics. He like elf them and, you know, he he's there for his audience and he knows his audience. And I'm going to be honest, y'all. Not long after that, The Irishman came out. And when I was watching The Irishman, I kept thinking, I wonder if... Kenya Barris was talking about The Irishman because it's a huge movie. Um, but, you know, he had to change it up and make it seem like it was a black movie that he was watching. And now reading this article confirms what I said. And I said this a, a while back. A while back, right? Mm-hmm. I swear I feel like it. <laughs> but anyway, let me get back to the article. Let me get to the article. Um... Yeah, it needs to, probably needs to be the end of the gangst, Italian gangster movie. They had an unbelievably successful run, but when you think about gangst, gangsters now, you think about blacks and Latinos. And I was like, why are we not telling those stories? So Barris now has a gang drama about the inception of the Crips, told through the eyes of founding member Michael Concepcion in the works at Showtime, which he has an interesting point. Um, But I think for our community, that if it's not going to be as good as New Jack City, we're going to be really upset if you go to tell movies about the Crips and the blood and they're not top tier the way New Jack City was. So that's my take on it, right? But he is right about Irishman. Kind of is one of the more lesser Italian gangster movies that I've watched because it was three hours, like an hour and 30, 40 minutes in before Jimmy Hoffa came up. And I've always been fascinated with the story of Jimmy Hoffa. So he had a point with, about that. But anywho. He's so we got the microconception showing the work set, um, movie in the work set show signs. He's also got an animated family comedy from the point of view of a baby moving forward at Nickelodeon. So, oh, that sounds interesting. Like that show, I think Life with Louie. And he's reteaming with Rashida Jones for an urban take on contemporary relationships. I bet that's going to be pretty good. There's a high concept 
um, idea of cooking with Simon Cowell and the late show, the late, late show with James Corbin, producer Ben Webster too. And another one about a rapper who buys a vineyard with This Is Us, Dan Vogelman, is gestating. And that doesn't even include the dozen plus films, a mix of writer, producer, and directors, directing projects that he's running through his new deal with Viacom. Film division, you know, King, it's it's good to be busy. I get it. I have a million things doing. I work from home. I do laundry. I cook, clean up, and all of that at the same time. But you're gonna have to, you know, you serving an audience. You're gonna have to make sure that you be giving people your best while you got it, your hands in all these different pots, right? So that's my little critique. <laughs> Nevin, who connects with Bears Weekly, seems genuinely thrilled by his catch. The thing with Kenya is not just a major league talent, but somebody who's an ideal generation factor, which I'm seeing. I'm seeing he got a lot of ideals. He got a lot of ideals. <laughs> and the temptation is always to say, Kenya, focus. But then he hits you with that one more idea. You're like, that's a really good idea. We've got to do that. Like, he pitches a reality show for CBS, and we're talking about that now. And I'm like, hey, don't focus on reality shows. But then you're like, that's a really good idea. And I don't have the willpower to say no to a good idea. I get it. <laughs> Barris knows he's out on the ledge now, betting on himself in a way that he never has before. Ever since the news... Uh, the new studio leaked out in October, which I must have been under a rock to, because I didn't hear nothing about him, Netflix having a little beef or anything like that until this article came out last week. He's been bombarded with inquiring texts and calls. Should others want what he has? And if he's being honest, he doesn't know the answer. It's still so new, and he's under no illusion that it will be successful during the four or five years that he intends to be actively writing and selling there. In fact, bears accepts that it probably won't be, but maybe I set it up where 15 years from now is worth something. Maybe I'll lay the groundwork and fight the years so it becomes something that one day we can all share in. Huh. Good for you, Barris. But he insists that at 50, which is how old he'll be with his commitment to Viacom because he's 45 now, as an active contributor comes to an end, he'll be done too or done in this form at this pace anyway. For the next however many minutes, one of the most prolific producers in Hollywood describes his plan for pseudo-retirement. Maybe I'll write a book or a movie a year, or maybe I'll be an executive. All right, come through, um, Mr. Quincy Tarantino, you know, protege. Um, but I don't know, but I'll definitely be semi-retired. That's a promise, he says. It's constantly me feeling like I'm missing out. So I have at least some use to me. I want to jump in a pool with my kids. I want to go play basketball. I want to have fun hopping on a jet. I just want to be able to slow down and enjoy all of this. But first, Barris has a studio to build. Et voila. <laughs> then it goes out talking about his his kingdom, studio, music, film, books, podcasts, and television. Go ahead, can you? Everything you can get done, get done. But make sure you get stuff done. Don't be one of those people who start a million projects and only have one successful unless that one successful be super super successful like blackish has been but um yeah y'all that was a pretty good um article on mr barry's hold up let me see what it's saying because they got him up here with billy and them barry's got it started television but Phil via Paramount going forward has become a priority among his upcoming projects a juneteenth musical with pharrell an adaptation of Richard's Wright, The Man Who Lived Underground. Okay, so it's just saying other collaborators with Billy Porter. Okay, because I was wondering what did they have cooking up because they got him on the picture of that, but it doesn't say. Whatever. Um, he signed a few artists to his music, his record label already, y'all. That's pretty awesome. And he says BET Studios is a modern day United Artist. He's a major equity partner and the team is actively trying to create excuse me recruit excuse me others today they've been inking deal with uh mid and upper level writers who were number twos on big shows and number ones on smaller shows the plan now is to sell premium programming from those underrepresented voices inside and out of the cbs viacom portfolio okay yeah that's the article that's pretty interesting about you mr bears hope you get everything that you want done and i am looking forward to seeing some of the stuff but just don't have us all excited and then you know come august of this year find out you you're out at bet studios because you know you want to have your way because i don't know y'all let me see what kenya bear sign is Mm-hmm. that's what i was thinking a damn leo he's a leo august 9th because sound like he always have to be 
he is either his way or the highway and he'll take the highway if he can't get it his way so <laughs> okay but yeah y'all i'll link the um the article down below let me know your thoughts what do you think about all the projects he have going on? Tell me if you, which of Kenya Barris' shows that you guys like. My favorite is Blackish. Now into Infinity. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.